on the coaching staff for Wofford. About to get this started. Both teams really excited about this matchup. As I mentioned, it's Wofford that tied the last time out against Mercer. Three straight positive results as we're underway. Tied UNC Asheville, then beat Queens 4-3, to three, and then in tied to start the SOCOM play against Mercer last time out if this goes out of play. Wofford donning the black kit tonight. It gives you a good look at Cameron Victor, goalkeeper, the junior out of Olmstead Falls, Ohio. Akron transfer has really cemented himself in the lineup. Played all 900 minutes so far between the pipes for the Terriers. Parker. It'll be a little bit interesting to see how this game plays out. You have a Wofford team that wants to keep possession, work the ball around. ETSU likes to keep possession as well, but as you can see very early, they like to press too. So it'll be interesting to see if Wofford's able to control possession like they want as Parker pushes forward. Gets it out wide left to Anderson. Goes back to Jones. Mohamedy pulls it back. You'll see a lot of this tonight with Gorst on ball. Of the Terriers trying to see if they can find a little opening in the ETSU defense. When I was talking to head coach David Lilly in his first season in charge of ETSU, no stranger to the SOCON having been an assistant at ETSU before returning from Milligan for the head job earlier this year. He was talking about that you, you know that Walford, particularly under Joel Tyson, are going to be a really co well-coached team. They have a strong philosophy of play, as you're seeing right here, and they're going to stick to it. They know what they want, and they've recruited accordingly for their type of play. And when you can do some of this, you won't see as much pressing from ETSU because it won't give them the opportunity the ball played over top. Picked up, though, by Hunter. The 5'11", 180-pound redshirt junior, or redshirt senior goalkeeper. Transfer from Lander, Mount Juliet, Tennessee. You can tell it lives in the Nashville area before to call it Mount Juliet. Mount Juliet to most people, though. Nice move. Foul call, but that was a nice piece of individual skill from Chuyup. you up from Oakville, Canada. Spent a whole month of my life in Oakville, Canada when I was in high school playing soccer against Canadian teams. Great area for soccer. That whole, Tor that whole Ontario area, basically is really Toronto's greater for that first two or three hours, but ETSU with a little bit of a half opportunity here. Victor's going to come all the way out, not out of danger. Wisely's going to get back in goal, though. Nice move by Ponholzer. Tested Victor early. That goes wide. But nice opportunity very, very early as Ponholzer plays this in. Get it out, but not enough. Able to play it in. Shot taken. Look like that with Kovacic. And indeed it was, the redshirt sophomore from Slovenia, University of Maryland transfer. A lot of transfers on this team. Really what ETSU has done for a long time, been able to find a lot of high quality transfers. 
to plug in with the high quality players that they already have and that they can work through in the system as well. Proven model that's worked. Coach Lilly was saying just that when we were talking on the phone that obviously this year for him it's been around about getting to know the players, getting used to the system, getting used to being back at ETSU. Obviously hadn't gone far from the area being at Milligan, which is in Johnson City area as well, but back in Division One and the SOCON, he's got to get used to a lot of different things. So it's been fun, but you know, his goal is not just for fun, but also to get the ETSU back to that championship pedigree that they have had for so long. Jones. Mohammedy. Parker's dispossessed by Ponholzer. You can see the ability that Ponholzer brings. Already been a nuisance, has the captain here on the left side. Five seven junior out of Flensburg, Germany. Has six points on the year. Played seven hundred and eighty-four minutes. Dangerous set piece opportunity to see if he'll cross it in. Instead of taking the shot, does ball not out of the area though. Gets out of play. Here we Morier working around. Gonna go all the way back to Hunter. Unable to keep the ball in. And really a lot of, couple, one really good half chance for ETSU, but other than that, it's been two teams trying to fill each other out and see where they can find some pockets of space. Ruel, as we mentioned, the Offensive Player of the Month last month for the SOCON. Childress decides to take it all the way back. Go back to Mohammed, preseason all SOCON pick. Mohammed, he's done nothing to dissuade that thought process before the year has had a strong year so far for the Terriers. Really paired well, particularly with Peacock, Jones, in that defensive area for the Terriers. Nice idea by Gorse, unable to connect, but you can see what he was trying to do there. Jones and the Terriers continue to work it around. Tenth minute. Appreciate you joining us on this Saturday evening, a beautiful day here in the upstate of South Carolina. Brian did a great job putting up the graphic after we note that 67 degrees, partly cloudy. That tells the story. Leaves starting to change a little. Just one of the reasons where people come from miles and miles around over the next month to see 
this area of the upstate and up to Western Carolina. As we suspected, it has had Waff it has been Wofford that has had the multitude of possession here. Parker trying to hold on. <laughs> just a great job just to somehow keep that ball obviously fouled in the end, but a bunch of different things could have happened in that scenario, but Parker made sure to keep that close to his foot. Nice ball played over the top. Anderson, can he get there? I think they said he was offsides. And he was first offside of the game. Just chew up. We'll put it back into play. ETSU coming off a hard-fought game the other day against Virginia Tech. A game that, you know, despite the scoreline of losing, you could argue that it could have been a little bit better and, and it was a lot closer than the scoreline said. ETSU was in it the whole time, first half, minus a couple mistakes. This ball goes out of play. Quickly put back into play by the Terriers. Jones working around. Pulls it back up. Goes the back to Mohammedy. Parker. Twirling. Gets it out wide. Childress on ball. As you can see, despite tinkering with um, a different system, when they had some of their injuries, Wofford back in that 3-4, 2-1, gone back to the shape. Feel like it fits their system best. You, as you can watch, you can see it kind of variates a little bit, but It really does seem to suit this team the best. Mamadi going to keep it in, but being chased. ETSU, if they want to press like usual, we'll have to run quite a bit tonight. Have to be very selective in that press. And Walford, uh, as you've said, heard me say, these defensive players' names 18 or 20 times already, they're content to work it around. Definitely a fun system to play in, though, if you're a player. Ball's always moving. That ball goes out of play. Gunter will put it back into play. Atherall gets it out wide to chew you up. Gonna have our offsides, first offsides of the night for ETSU. Jones thinks the ball may be a little flat. Asking for another one. Players work with the ball so much they can tell when there's just a little bit off of the, some of these balls.
MTSU working it around. Nice idea. But a great job by Holman. Goes out of play, but it was a good job of positioning by Holman to make sure that through ball didn't get put through. Carroll puts it back into play. Gets it back. Gonna cross it. Deflected. And Parker and the Terriers are quickly going forward. Just fun to watch Parker play and dribble it around as it is Robo with the ball at his foot. So this ball is moved around Holman. Good defense. I think Peacock thought that was going to be a foul. He expected it to be a foul. No foul called, and he played it back to the area, but basically just gave the ball back to ETSU. That's why you always hear him say, play till you hear the whistle. Ball out of play, ETSU with the throw in, deep in. Wofford's defensive area. Foster, excuse me, Gunter will throw it in. I like the idea from Catherall, but always was going high, lean back the whole time. College football Saturday, that would have been good, though. Senior from Seattle, Washington. I kid, obviously, on that one, but the idea was right there. The graduate, former Gardner Webb running Bulldog. Usually in that graduate year to join this ETSU program. Nice interior passing from ETSU. Nice ball played in. Victor knows he can't use his hand. Wise moves by the goalkeeper. Contorted his body perfectly. Let's take a look at it again. The nice ball played in. Ponholzer had some room. Knew he was out of the area and did everything he could to. That was a lot closer to the arm than I thought it was originally. It didn't hit it, but that was a lot closer than I thought it was on first look. Victor would have been a little hard luck if that would have hit his arm because he had done everything right in that situation. ETSU continuing to straddle that left sidelines where they've had their most success. Foul called here though. Muhammad is going to put it back into play quickly to Victor. Parker able to get on ball. Tries to switch the point of attack. Picked up easily, though, by Gunter. Nice job. I thought he got held on to that. Pushed it out wide, though. Couldn't hang on to it. Could Victor.
Muhammad, he had done a fantastic job on Richards, trying to make sure he didn't have the right angle, and all he could do was that. And I thought Victor was going to be able to pick it up, but still goes out of play for a corner kick first of the day. You see right there three ETSU shots to just none yet so far. Four of the Terriers. So we mentioned this will be corner kick number one on the day for Wofford. As Carroll put it into play. Nice whipping ball into the box. Headed out by Wofford. ETSU going to cycle it back in. Offside, though. Second offside of the day. You tell Foster didn't think he was offside. Foster from London, England, but played his high school not too far from here, J.L. Mann High School. In the Greenville area. Childers trying to get on ball, able to get it there. Gets it out to Peacock. Jones trying to find the run down the left sideline from Anderson. Just gets it out wide right. As we mentioned, Wofford comes into tonight 3 5 and 2 overall. Three straight positive results. After the loss to USC Upstate on September 17th, really started to put things together. Nice ball played in the box. Just a little bit missed time by Parker. It was a USC Upstate game where Wofford was down 3-0 at one point, came back, roaring back to make it 3-2, but Upstate put one to the back of the net in the latter minutes of the match. And, you know, it was kind of one of those moments as a team, Coach Tyson told me on the phone earlier this week, where they kind of came together and said, hey, we got to go out there and take it. We can't just sit back and, you know, we got to take ownership of everything we can do. And they've done that since that point in time, going 1-0-2. That goes out of play. To be honest, that next game against USC, UNC Asheville, got to be a little mad. A game that UNC Asheville scored in the last few minutes of the game. Wofford had dominated for the most part. Asheville, credit to them, though, had been able to find the equalizer in the final minutes. Mick Giordano doing a great job with that UNC Asheville Bulldog program. Foul called here. Just the fifth foul in this match in the 24th minutes. And two teams that are pretty physical. That's uh, not a lot so far. Ball's been moving so much. And exactly what you want if you're a Wofford fan. Jones tries to get onto this one. Ponholtz are still able to get there, though. It's going to go out of play, and it will for another corner kick. Looks like it'll be Carroll to come over there. Raises his hand to let his teammates know what they're going to call them what set piece designation they're going through. Clarksville, Tennessee native. Pulls it up again to let them know. 
When he's walking over, that means he's setting up their shape. And that one right before lets him know where he's going to try to place it. Holman with some steam, has some room. Tries to pass it in, still on ball is Holman. Pulls it back. Looking for Parker. Nice job by ETSU getting back. Holman had some room, but not the run through the middle that he was looking for. Anderson. Nice move to get open. Nice flick into the box. Gets a head on it to the Terriers, but never was going to test the goalkeeper. But nice sequence all the way around offensively for Terriers. Really their best moment offensively all game so far. If you take a look at it right here, it was a good job by Anderson to fake it up and then just with a nightly flicked in curve ball. That's a tough header from that angle. As you saw with Anderson, you just want to put a little bit of spin on hope that the run comes in and could spin off that spin, but just couldn't connect right there. You see it all the time in soccer. It's just put it in the area and see if you can make something happen, but you got to have, give them that ability to do so. Pon Holzer. Well, nutmeg to keep the ball. That is Dennis into the match now for the Terriers. Kind of rudely welcome with that nutmeg a minute ago. See if they call it right here, and they are. It's probably the right call. Not probably, it is the right call. As we always say, if you don't see hear them argue, <laughs> then it's the right call. Peacock just gets there a little bit too late. And you can see he knew it. An opportunity here to take the lead almost completely against the run of play for ETSU. It'll be Richards that'll step up. Richards tied with Ruel for the league lead with six goals on the year, trying to make it seven. Victor going to guess wrong, and that'll go in. Make it goal number seven for Karen Richards. And just like that, ETSU takes the lead on the penalty kick. Full credit to ETSU. Nice penalty. Put it exactly where he wanted. And Victor would have had to guess perfectly to even have a shot at that. Richards, as you see, leads to SoCon in points with 15, seven goals, two assists. Actually, that goes up to 16 now after that. We were saying that's what it was. Now it's 16, so... Great year so far for Richards. We kind of touted it coming in. This is the battle of two players that led the league in the category in Ruel and Richards. ETSU a player on the ground. Probably going to have to put this out of play or at least stop plays. Clock stops here in the 27th minute. Athletic training staff will have to come out. Let's take a look at what happened. Definitely not malicious, just Richards was caught in no man's land, as they like to call it. The in-between play. The senior from Hamilton, New Zealand. Gonna have to step off for a second either way per rules. Don't know if he'll come back in or not. 
But either way, I have to step off the pitch for a second. You see, coming to talk, it looks like Coach Lilly's going to have to replace him from the way they're talking, and indeed he is. And the substitution has been made. We'll let you know exactly who it was because we couldn't see. It was Lucas Leitner is the one coming in, also out of Clarksville, Tennessee. Clarksville, Tennessee has been good to ETSU. I was going to make a bad joke that they take the last train there to get them, but and then I couldn't collect myself from not making the joke either, but. Robo on ball. Haven't said his name a lot tonight. Gorst. One nothing ETSU off the penalty kick from Kieran Richards. Parker unable, or excuse me, Anderson unable to get there. See Richard getting worked on right there. Hopefully it is something that simple. You don't wish anything on anybody, but meaning just a hamstring or maybe the calf acting up a little bit. TSU quickly going the other way. Pon Holzer unable to keep going forward though. Jones gets it to Gorst. Gorst looking for Ruel. Ruel unable to get position. Muhammad, he tries to take it away. Instead, it'll go out, and Ponholzer will throw it in. Muhammad, he turns back, goes back to Victor. The first time in a little bit, you've seen that press being used by ATSU as Ponholzer. Gets the ball back. Unable to connect, though. On the interior passing is ETSU. Dennis. That'll be ETSU throw in. Just hit off of him. She was able to host Virginia Tech earlier this week, actually. What a nice opportunity for fans in Johnson City of a beautiful game. Oh, the world plays the ball down. Jones gets there. Able to get enough on it to get it out of danger, though. Allow the Terriers to collect the shape. Chew you up. Too much height on that pass. Not what he was looking for at all. Oscar Billman coming back in, or coming in for the Terriers. Freshman out of Stockholm, Sweden. And going back to, as we talked about, it was Leitner that came in for Richards.
Terry's made that look a lot easier than that is as Robles gonna be fouled. Quickly gonna go. Gonna have to pull up. Robo, four goals and four assists. Also very much in the top categories in the SOCON, that's four assists. Tied for third in the league entering tonight. And Gondo from UNCG, don't know what he did today, but has six assists. Entering today. Along with Gaither from Mercer. I know they won, but I don't know if he assisted. I guess it's probably the better way to say it. So put back into play quickly. Victor's going to be able to pick this up. Holman. Peacock. That's never fun. Mohamedy trying to be a little bit more direct. Get the pair, Terriers going the other way. Dennis with the ball. Going to go out left. Gets it out to Anderson. Anderson. Rightfully pulling it up, finds that run in the middle. Childress just didn't get over it enough. Got way too under it. Exactly what you want. Good job by Anderson to make that a possibility. By the freshman from Marietta, Georgia. 5'9", 160. Really been a nice addition to this Terriers program. A box-to-box -box guy who has a high, high work rate. And you got to have a high work rate to play here at Walford. They run the entire time. Not that anybody's work rate is low if you're playing college soccer. But there are some programs that move the ball around a lot more, and Walford's definitely one of them. Same thing could be said for ETSU in that high press. Ball goes out of play. Children's dispossessed. Ponholzer off the bar. Hit it well. Can he get that back in? Able to collect and score. Nice follow up by Ponholzer. And just like that, it's 2 0. Beautifully hit the first one. Hit off the crossbar. Able to collect again. As you see here, Children's dispossessed. Takes a shot. Caroms off. Gets back in for the goal. Again, very much against the run of play. It was Wofford that had been controlling things. Tariq Punholzer, as we mentioned, out of Germany, the 5'7 junior, the captain. Third goal of the year. Also has two assists, so eight points in total on the season has really been Strong tonight in every facet. Wofford quickly trying to force the issue. Dennis able to find Robo. Robo gets it out. Anderson has the room. Ball played in. That was a beautiful, perfect ball, but nobody made that run. Mohamedy. Still Mohamedy. Gets it back. Offer's got to be careful. ETSU quickly going the other way. Good job to get that out of play, though, by Peacock. Mm -hmm. 
And when I say against the run of play, obviously nothing against ETSU. It just they've controlled play at points. It's just both goals have kind of come when Wofford's really been controlling possession and going forward. But credit ETSU, their counters and their high press have really been a nuisance for the Terriers tonight. They probably don't aren't using it as much as they usually do, but when they are using it, it's working to perfection, obviously, as you can see by the 2-0 score line. Ball goes out of play. Referee says he's got to go back a little bit. So the ETSU teams won two of their last three. All three matchups for tonight have been against teams from the state of Virginia. Beat Radford 3-0, then followed that up with a 3-0 win over VMI, and then as we mentioned, had the 2-0 loss to Virginia Tech at home. Through ball played in, nicely stepped up by Mohammadi. Mohammadi's pass didn't have enough weight on it. Two up, goes back to Foster. Foster's pass is blocked but wisely heads it back. Gonna have enough on it to get back to Hunter. And then some. Billman forces him to pick it up. Hunter in a lot of red tonight. Shot taken. Gets out of play though. Chew you up. Got the all working it around left. Picked up by Carroll. Carroll defended by Dennis. ETSU can starting to control the run of play. Good job of possessing over the last few minutes. Mohammadi being tested by Ponholzer. Ponholzer able to get it back via the throw in. idea but easily picked up by the Terriers close to being a handball instead taken for the shot and Victor picks it up though Inchima with the shot Coming up at halftime, we'll take you around the SOCON highlights and stats, and we'll look at the upcoming schedules for both teams. Make sure to join us. Foul called. Just a third foul issue on the Terriers all day. is going to be able to play this into the box. Ball played in, headed out by the Terriers. <laughs> really love what he just did there. Carroll definitely made that out of nothing. 
A shot taken by Foster. Almost cost Victor. But Victor able to parry it away. We get it right here. Setting up perfectly. Held on, held on, curved it. Just not enough swerve on it though to beat Victor. Plays it in, headed in. Got a lot of power on that shot. Did Leitner. So we were talking about the spin earlier and that's exactly what he did right there. He played off of it and put his head behind it and got more power than was anticipated. Made that look easy, but that's hard. Robo. Continuing to dance around. Decides to pull it up. Gorst. Offered setting up their offense. Somehow snuck through to Gorst. Gorst gets it out to Anderson or thought he was good and be able to, but Chuy up. Continues to be strong. ETSU, ETSU switches the point of attack. Pon Holzer. Good job by Holman just to get his foot in there. Forty fourth minute. ETSU two offered nothing. able to curve it around enough, but a nice idea by ETSU. ETSU definitely asking a bunch of questions of this Wofford defense tonight. And a couple times so far, ETSU's found the answer they were looking for. Victor picks it up. In the final seconds here, we got just about 30 seconds to play by the time he boots it. Exactly 30 seconds on the boot. Could, I thought it was going to be able to get to the Terriers. Trying to see if they can make something happen right before half. Gets it out to Anderson. Anderson's going to be able to get there. Looking for the cross. Crosses it in. Hunter picks it up, and that'll do it here, more than likely for the first half as you see Ponholzer clapping for his teammates. That's the difference. A Richards PK and a Ponholzer solo effort has ETSU leading two to nothing over Wofford at intermission. We'll be back to talk about that and way much more on the halftime break here on ESPN Plus. Men's college, 20 and 3 in the NAIA Appalachian Athletic Conference, really made a name for himself at that area after a tremendous stint as the assistant coach at ETSU, where they won a lot of games during his time. They went to multiple NCAA tournaments and were underway. The same could be said of Joel Tyson, who really has done a great job building up this program taking his first opportunity as a head coach and really recruiting it the way that he thinks should be set and got some really good players in this Wofford system, only getting better every year. Takes time to build. You're starting to see the fruits of that. Course comes back. Anderson. Who can be absolutely lethal with that left foot. Gets it to Billman, but Chuyup 
continues to hold it down. Really adept with the ball at his feet. And you don't say that all the time for defenders, but you know, one of the new nuances in the beautiful game is having outside backs who can be just as strong on the ball as midfielders, as Anderson working around, trying to get you up guessing. Nice ball played in, just missed. That's almost always a battle that Anderson's gonna win. Just couldn't get on it there though. Good idea. Wofford almost listened to our pep talk as well, exactly what they're doing. I'm obviously joking when I say that, but that's, you knew that that's the way that they were going to come out because there were some chances there. If we go back to Coach Lilly, the ETSU head coach, we went through what he did at Milligan, but really off to a nice start here at ETSU, trying to build it back up to where it was, former professional soccer player. Jones on ball, plays it up. I was looking up the exact number, but going back to Lily, who was also a coach under Scott Calabrese and Bo Ishani during their times at ETSU. ETSU was 81, 49, and 27 during that stretch with him as an assistant. Then you saw that you heard the numbers when going to Milligan. That's why he got the job. Nice ball played to Anderson. Robo. Wisely pulls it back here. Trying to see if they can get ETSU chasing a little bit. Stretch. Ball played in though. Anderson might have should have made that run. Gorst. Robo. Nice one, two. ETSU able to get it back though. Been a nice start to the second half for the Terriers. Still looking for that first goal, but you gotta like the way they're playing right now. Gorst, dispossessed. Terriers continue to move the ball around. ETSU defense being tested here at the start of the half of this is a foul. Go, Terry's going to continue to be able to keep pressing this ETSU defense. Ball played out wide left. Pondholtz are the second goal scorer. Really has done a fantastic job holding that on that left sideline. This one played into the ref though, who stops play. He tried to get out of the way. Doesn't have much meat on that frame does the ref, but he tried to get as much away as he could. That's a nice way to say he's a very skinny fellow, but he could, he still, that just shows how close he was when he made the pass. Nice 
Nice ball played out wide left. And Anderson looking to see how things are shaping up for Wofford. Holman pass picked up by ETSU. Thought he was going to be able to get it back. Foul called. Ball goes back. We'll get things back underway. Definitely not the ball that Ramos was looking for. Parker plays the through ball. Beautiful through ball. Hunter's out. A good job collapsing. Robo, though, still has it. Going to be able to try to curve this around, but not curved enough. Robo, as we've seen throughout the year, can definitely make that shot happen. Can the 5'9", 155-pound sophomore from Madison, Alabama, but that wasn't one of those times. Offer controlling things offensively this half so far. Still looking for that goal, though. Chew you up. Unable to keep it for ETSU, though. Anderson goes back to Peacock. Jones. Mohammedy. Parker trying to keep on ball, but falls down. Holman trying to collect back. This ball goes out of play, though. Gorse fouled as he tries to make the pass. Right in front of the Nick Fanati passes it along to Mohammedy to get the ball back into play. Offer with an elite coaching staff. Coach Fanati brings a lot of experience to the staff at the club and college level. for chasing. Peacock just puts this one out of play. Ramos trying to get the position, but it's Wofford with Anderson going the other way. Good job by on the step by Chuya. Have to be impressed by the way he's played. Jones hits off of him. Still not out of play, though. Ooh. Thought he was going to be able to turn on it, but he did, and it just goes out, though. Carroll definitely would love that one back. It's a really nice job by Jones to block this. Somehow the ball stays in. And an even better job in the middle by Holman to make sure that didn't get it. Shot on goal. And then Carroll shot, just not what he was looking for. 
Foul called on ETSU. Fifty six minute. Wofford looking to take advantage of controlling things here in the opening ten plus of the second half. Robo fouled by Ramos. Or excuse me, by Kovacic. They were both right there. Robo gonna lift this into the box. Nice ball, but into the hands of Hunter. Comes up nicely. Let's, let's go back to the trivia question. Did you all figure it out? I know the answer, but let's see. What year was Walford's first Division I soccer year? 1995. The first Division I win was October 13th versus Newberry. There's some knowledge. Impress your friends. Ball played out to Robo. In fact, if you want to tie it in even more, both the men's and women's soccer programs at Walford started around the same time, early 90s. Nice ball movement. Billman trying to get there. Gets it out wide. Ponholtz are quickly going to the right. Looking up, looking up. Sees a lot of black shirts. And he's dispossessed by Anderson, who gets it to Gorst. Gorst assesses the situation, gets it out to Robo. Robo working it around. Nice move by Gunter. Wofford still able to get the ball back. ETSU has a lot of players warming up over there. Ramos with the ball right now, though. Substitutions being made. Kieran Richards making a return. Good to see him returning to the pitch after going down. Looks like a little bit of a calf or hamstring to see how that works out as he tries to work it out here in the game. Sokon leader in points and goal. Ponholzer scored the second goal of the match, trying to get another one right here. Victor able to block this one. Anderson bought his foot, just kicks it forward. Find Billman, nicely pulled back from Billman. Jones goes out wide to Mohammedy. Picked up though by ETSU. Work great from Billman, gets the ball back and it gets out wide to Peacock. Robo. Peacock working one, two. ETSU's really done a nice job tonight of staying compact, staying in their lanes. As we've talked about 
throw here. Nice ball played over the top. It's going to be outside. Fourth time the ETSU has been called offsides tonight. Victor playing a sweeper keeper there. Ball played into the box. Chew up, heads it away. Robo blocks it and gets it to Parker. Parker gets it out wide right. Robo trying to get the ball back. Nice turn. High quality turn. Really tough to do in that situation. Got to have a lot of confidence to make that move. Anderson. Finds Robo. Robo plays the ball. A nice searching ball in the box. Parker able to chest it, but can't get control. Jones on the ball. Sophomore from Irmo, South Carolina. Dutch Fort product. Really been a tremendous addition to this Wofford program. You're only as good as your spine. Wofford has an incredible spine. By that, I mean through the center. And you know that that's what Coach Tyson and his coaching staff have been preaching to people wanting to join the program is that they got players that still got two, three left, and not just players, high-quality players. I'm sure there's a lot of prep players or transfers in that thought process as well that would love to join this Wofford software program. Obviously, ETSU as well. As you know, that is one of the pillars of the program, finding those individuals, or has been in the past. From the looks of the roster, it's just that way now still, but let's see what Coach Lilly does for the next few years. Can't imagine that changed too much. Two great cities as well between Spartanburg and Johnson City. Close to being a handball, but Billman's got it. Gets it out, and it'll go back to Mohammedy. Walford's had 90% of the possession here in the second half. Still looking to be goal dangerous. Billman... Trying to make that happen. Is this going to go out for corner kick? And indeed it will. And looks like it'll be Anderson to come over and take the corner kick. Which will be the first of the day for the Terriers. Just a third of the match. That has been an area where Wofford has done well this year. 54 on the year. Nice ball play in the box. Could this be a goal? They call a foul. And then another push. Really nice ball played in the box. Definitely hard luck for the Terriers because that was a goal. Going to have to come over as it looks like. Hunter's down. And Mark Kuadio. So only other 
goalkeeper that has played for the Terriers. We'll see if they have to go to him in just a minute. We're going to take a little bit of break. We'll be back for more ESPN Plus men's college soccer. ETSU is you. ETSU is adventurous and distinctive and inclusive. ETSU is passionate. Together, we create a place where community is family. Your passion, your future, your purpose. ETSU is you. back hunter able to stand back up Come back up looking no worse for wear thankfully senior from mount juliet tennessee as we mentioned the lander university transfer one of the top division two programs in the country is lander ETSU quickly on the attack. I mentioned it's been Wofford that's controlled things here in the second half, but no goal just yet. Ruel's trying to change that here. Can he get there? Nice defense from Foster. Dominic Foster, the senior from London, England, by way of jail man. Of course, just kind of carried up to him. Plays the ball back. Hard luck there for sure. Going to come up with a score update from around the SoCon. Mercer and Furman, 0-0. Zero, zero. Fouls, 13-9. Favor of Mercer. So a physical game as you would expect when Mercer and Furman play. Got 14 here tonight, which is pretty low for the type of physical SOCON game you would expect. And really, it has been a fairly physical game, but a lot of it's been because of the possession from the Terriers. And again, not a discredit at all to ETSU. It's just Wofford has controlled a lot of the play tonight, and that's by design. But... The things that matter are the goals. And Kieran Richards finds his second after being injured in the first half against the run of play again. Comes back, puts it in the back of the net for his league leading eighth goal of the year. Look at a beautiful one two combination. Victor came out nicely, but Kieran Richards does what the true number nine should do puts it in the back of the net. And it's 3 nothing ETSU. Here in the 68th minute. Eighth goal of the year for Richards. The Hamilton, New Zealand native. Went to school in Auckland, New Zealand before... Finding his way to ETSU. Calm, collected finish. That goes back. Truthfully, we almost set up that goal with the conversation we were having. Wofford's done a lot tonight, just that haven't been able to find the back of the net. And ETSU has done what they do as well as anybody which is find the back of the net. Particularly when you have a player of the ability of Kieran Richards as Chuyup, who's been phenomenal tonight, is down. Is 
take a look at it right here. That one's pretty much on chew up, just kind of stepping wrong. We have the benefit of video, but I think the UTSU players thought that he came into him a little bit, but he definitely did not. It was more chew up stepping wrong. And as somebody who's done that a bunch of times, it's never fun. Look at the sophomore, really been impressed with him. From a talent rich area in Oakville, Ontario, Canada. His Robo and Anderson are on ball. More than likely it'll be Robo playing it and whipping it in. He whips it in well. Just an absolute perfect ball played in the box, but Walford just couldn't latch on to it. Incredibly high quality service per usual from Jackson Robel. As we mentioned in the top four in the SOCON for assist on the year with four. Coach Lily and I talked the other day. There's another shot's going to be taken here. This is going to go wide left, though. Not challenge Victor at all. He was talking about that this has been a series that has always been high scoring. He expected both teams to find the back of the net and still some time for the Terriers to do just that. In fact, there is precedent. All you got to do is look back to September 17th against USC Upstate. Down 3-0 and came roaring back. Can Wofford do that again and put themselves back into this game? Obviously, that's what Coach Tyson and the coaching staff from the sideline are telling his team that we've been here before. Nice interior passing. Parker. Looking for Robo, but a good step. And quickly on the counter for ETSU. Peacock tried to slow him down a little bit. Referee said advantage. Thought the run was being made. Exactly the pass that should be made in that situation, but the run wasn't made. And it goes out to Anderson for Walford. Been really impressed with ETSU's movement off the ball tonight. Really good understanding and link up play between the players. Something that can only be done in practice, really. Lots of play and repetition together. Try to work it out in games, but games are to win or to try to get a result. So you can tell. This group really likes playing with each other. Makes his way back. Nice foundation move for Parker, but he can't get there. TSU with the run of play right now, controlling the possession over the last few minutes. No. 
Anderson and Robo working together. Gets it to Gorsk. Who has the run? Can Ruel get there? Not out of danger yet are the Terriers. Look like a handball, but a handball to the foul the other way. Quickly, Walford trying to force the issue. Back to Victor. Anderson continues to track back. This ball goes out of play. Walford still looking for that first goal, trying to get back into this game. You look at it, last three games, Kieran Richards, four goals. The rest of the team, two, has goals in the 27th minute, 68th minute here tonight. Eight goals on the year leads to SoCon in goals and points. One of the top performers in the area in the nation, too. TSU trying to continue to add more. This ball, too much on it, too high. Looks like we're going to have another substitution here in the 75th minute. Lots of substitutions. In fact, we'll try to get you all of them here. Ponholtz are coming back in. ETSU 1 2 allows them to, to slip through. Tries to get across the middle. Nobody was there, though. Nobody made that run. Anderson, who's put in a high work rate shift all night, continues to work back. If you haven't noticed, it's been Walford that's changed their shape a little as they're trying to push forward. Seeing Jones out wide right. Shot taken. Don't know if he saw that he had the through ball there. Reyes. With the shot, the sophomore from Boca Raton, who had just joined the fray along with Nicolaisine and Thaddeus Dennis. All played in. This goes wide left. One he'd like back. Eight 
even when you're a true goal scorer, you're going to have your moments. Does a nice job cutting back. Cuts him well. Not much Mohammadi really could have done in that situation, but held his ground pretty well. Dennis. Richards, or excuse me. Foster all the way up. Still in play. Does this go in? Just gets pushed wide left. I'll still in play. Here in the 78th minute. Goes out wide to Jones. Working it around. Jones out wide right. Gorst. Able to get it, Robo. Robo for the off run, gets it back to Gorst. Gorst takes a shot. Reyes trying to collect it. Peacock throws it in to Mohammadi. Mohammadi Manning in the middle now. The Jones has pushed out right. Didn't need to put that much on it. Eleven minutes to play here. Robo issued a foul. Chew up coming over. Obviously, ETSU content to take their time. So, going to leave it for Hunter. Three nothing ETSU. If you're just joining it. It was two goals in the first half for ETSU. Penalty kick first, and then a pond holster. Goal in the 35th. The penalty by Richards. Richards added to his tally to pick up the brace with the second goal in the 68th minute. Richards with eight goals on the year now leads SoCon in goals and points. Ball out of play. Nicolasing looking to get the ball back in play. Jason Gunn and Leitner coming in. Lightner returning. Gunn making his first appearance of the night. A freshman from Asheville, North Carolina. Not too far from Johnson City. Victor still on ball. Showing he's got some moves with his feet as well. Anderson in the middle to Reyes. Going to get out wide right to Jones. Reyes going to take another shot. I think caromed off his own player. Mohammadi looking for the run. 
ETSU not going to press, and ball goes out of play. Eighty second minute. Offer still looking for goal number one. We've talked about Walford having the run of play, but if you look at the stats, kind of tough to see is a 15 to 5 shot advantage. Nevertheless, it's been a lot of counterattacking and also just staying within their system. It's Foster's foul. Checkley just kind of turned into him. <laughs> didn't mean to. Trying to get the ball, but didn't mean to foul, obviously. Ball still up in the air. Nice piece of skill from Kovacic. Robo and Anderson. Mahamedy. Right idea. But Hunter picks this up. Swafford now basically has six and a half minutes to get three goals. GTSU doing a nice job kind of killing the clock. Bonholzer. That goes out of play. Betting court coming in. Freshman from Charlotte, North Carolina, South Mecklenburg. Gunter. ETSU working it around. Trying to kill out the clock here. Up by three. So they were offsides. TSU with five offsides calls tonight. Ponholzer, Jones on him. Nicolaisin helping. Just kind of Showing game management right there. Understanding of the situation, realizing that don't need another goal. Content to take time off the clock. As she gets the ball. Been really impressed with Chew up.
That job by Nicolasi to get it out of play. Jason Gunn. Going to throw it in. As we mentioned just a minute ago, another chance to catch some great soccer here at Snyder Fields tomorrow. The Walford women's soccer team playing extremely well of late. Welcomes the Citadel at 2 p.m. here at Snyder Field. If you can't make it, join us on ESPN+. Plus. But either way, make sure to tune in. should be entertaining. Citadel playing very, very well. Has wins over Furman and Sanford this year. Walford. Last two is tied Mercer and Furman. Also picked up a win over ETSU on September 25th. Two minutes remaining. Ponholtz are on ball. Looking to kill the clock. Hunter trying to keep the clean sheet. Foster plays it up, but Jones able to get a boot on it. Peacock. Rubel. Reyes. Peacock. Walford staying in system. Trying to get that goal. Jones on the right side of things. Nice ball played into Robel. Robel's going to get fouled here. Set piece opportunity in the final seconds. St clock is stopped by the referee. The Rebels going to have a chance to put one on goal here in the final seconds. Can he get a good shot on goal? Let's see. Hit well, but right at Hunter. Had a little power on it but just couldn't get enough curve on it. As all Walfer fans know, Robo definitely can hit that shot. ETSU looking to close things out. Less than 20 seconds remaining. Going to be a corner kick, but they may just let it end things up. And they will. ETSU content with the 3 0 win, as they should be. Strong performance in picking up the victory. It was a brace from Kieran Richards with, Richards with two goals, and then another from Ponholzer that leads ETSU.